There are so many reasons to record yourself on video these days, whether it's for an audition, a school project, or to share on social media such as YouTube. If you don't know where to start with video, or if you're looking to improve, then stay tuned for a few of my tips on how to get started making flute videos at home using just a smartphone. Hi, I'm Lance Suzuki. I'm a professional flutist and teacher, and my goal is to inform and inspire your flute practice. As I meet and interact with more of you on YouTube and other platforms, I come across a lot of people looking for information about how to record the flute at home. So today, I'm going to be covering the basics of how you can record yourself at home using just a smartphone. In future videos, I'll be going into greater detail on more advanced topics, such as my microphone settings, editing videos on your iPhone, laptop, or computer, and adding musical subtitles. So if you're interested in any of that information, please stay tuned to my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Learning to record myself and working to grow this YouTube channel have been my personal projects for the past six months. And to be honest, it hasn't always been easy. However, it's been a great outlet for my creative energies and an excellent opportunity for personal growth during this very challenging year. But what about you? Let me know why you're recording down in the comments. When setting up your smartphone to record, I highly recommend selecting the highest resolution possible. And for YouTube, hopefully that can be at least 1080p, which is also known as Full HD. Also, a general trend among digital creators is to shoot in 30 frames per second, which you'll also see as FPS. However, 24 frames per second is also widely used. For flute videos in general, it's better to shoot in landscape mode as opposed to portrait. Landscape is the wide orientation as opposed to the tall one, and this is because the flute is a horizontal instrument, and it's therefore much easier to keep in the frame in landscape rather than portrait. If it's possible, use your phone's primary camera rather than the selfie camera to get a better quality video recording. This can make it slightly more difficult because you can't see yourself as you film. So before you do a full take, do a few short practice clips to test your setup. When setting up your shot, try to minimize the visual distractions in your background. Also, try to pick the quietest place in your house to record. Consider things like street noise, televisions, pets, and other humans. Mount your phone on a tripod to get a cleaner and more stable shot. When choosing a tripod online, look at the maximum height. Ideally, you should be able to raise your phone to at least face level while you're standing or sitting. I'm posting a link to the tripod that I currently use down in the description of this video. It's not the fanciest or the most expensive, but it gets the job done. Always keep lighting in mind when choosing your location. If you're taking advantage of natural light, Make sure that it's shining on your face and not on your back. If you're not getting enough light on your face, you could try moving one or a few lamps a little bit closer to you. You could also invest in some studio lighting as I have. Here I am in a dark room. Here I am using only this room's overhead lighting. Here I am with the overhead lights still on and adding some studio lights. And finally, here I am with only studio lights and no overhead lights. So can you tell any difference? Do you have a preference? Please let me know in the comments. By the way, I'm posting links to the softbox style studio lights that I use down in the description box of this video. However, they are a little bit bulky and I'm thinking about changing to some LED panels. If you have a choice in the matter when selecting music, try to pick something short and not too complicated. Keep in mind that you want to be focusing on the recording aspect and not necessarily on the flute playing part of this project. Learn your music to a point where you know what you want to do and feel comfortable enough technically. However, you don't have to prepare a concert ready performance. In fact, I think it's better if you start the recording process a little bit sooner before you feel like you're actually ready. The beauty of at home recording is that you can try as many times as you want. You can take the time to look back and analyze and listen and think about how you might want to do things differently the next time. In this way, the recording process can actually inform the way that you practice and perform. 
Before you press record, be sure to put your phone into airplane and do not disturb modes. This will prevent any disruptions during your recording. Before you record a full take, do a quick test clip to check your audio and video settings. And here's a pro tip. Use your test clip to practice that really tricky passage very, very slowly. We all make mistakes, and if you make a mistake while recording, it's okay to stop and not finish the take. Preserving your energy at this point could help you to have more energy later on when you might need it. Be critical of your playing, but not judgmental. Also, be gentle with yourself. There have been many times where in the thick of things I've played something and thought, man, that note did not speak the way that I wanted to, and I stopped playing only to listen back and find that my concerns were totally inaudible. This brings me to my final recording tip. Listen back to every note you record, even when you mess up. Sometimes the way that we perceive music and our playing can be very different from what comes across to the listener and on video. Use each take, even the bad ones, to learn about how your perception is relating to the music that you're actually creating. After you've gotten a take that you like, clean it up a little bit by trimming off the edges. You can even do this in the Basic Photos app on the iPhone. A good rule of thumb is that in digital content, something important should happen within the first 15 seconds. If you're editing your video in an app like iMovie, maybe add a title to give your viewer a little more information about the piece you're playing. As I mentioned before, I'll also be showing you some more slightly advanced techniques for editing, including adding musical subtitles in a later video, so please stay tuned for that. When you're satisfied with your video, the final step is to upload it, and on YouTube, I always select the private publishing option. This allows your video to upload fully in HD, and it gives you one last chance to review your video before making it public. My final tip of the day is to just start recording. It's easy to say, I don't know what I'm doing, this is intimidating, or I'm afraid my first video will be terrible. And yes, your first video might not be your best work because it is intimidating and there are a lot of new skills to learn. Even if your first video doesn't come out exactly the way that you'd hoped, don't beat yourself up about it. In fact, embrace it because it's the start of a process of learning and growth that you can only achieve by just getting in there and trying. So get to it and record something. And if you do, please let me know in the comments and post a link to your video down there if you like as well. Well, that's it for today, and I hope you've gotten some value out of this video. If so, please let me know in the comments and by giving it a like. Also, for more informational and inspirational flute content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.